Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're going to talk about checking a potentiometer. Now first before we get into how to check them, we need to talk about the different kind of potentiometers that there are. A lot of times people abbreviate it and just say a 5k pot or 100k pot. What they're talk the pot is short for potentiometer. And what it is is a variable resistor. The most common potentiometer that I can think of for those of you who are old like me when you used to pull off the knob on a car stereo, you would see something like this that stuck out the other side, and you could turn it by hand, but it worked a lot better, of course, if the knob was on there. What was inside was a potentiometer, and we use a lot of those in video games. We use them to turn up volume. We also use them like on the chassis. When we, we saw the video where we shot how to adjust the chassis, we're turning a potentiometer. So we're going to look at a first a few types. Of course, there is a type I just mentioned that's more for like volume. Here's one out of a game that is near a uh, test or start button or, or something like that. And you would reach up inside there and turn it by hand. And of course, as you add more resistance, you know, the uh, volume would go down. But as you turn it up or let the resistance through, then the volume would go up. And that's just real simple. That's what it does. It, it allows a little bit through or a lot through. So it's kind of like a valve. And when you open and close it, everybody understand how that works. So there's this type. It's also the, like a, some of them you might see are kind of bigger like this. We got this one. What's neat about this is it tells the size or what uh, the value of the pot is on the back. Some of them do, some of them don't. Or maybe the package that you bought it in might say so. A good thing to know is what size is it. So a lot of times, if let's say for volume, for instance, if you've got a game, I've heard people say, well, mine just doesn't turn up very loud. You could change down, or I mean up to a higher uh, pot value and actually allow more resistance to flow or, or not flow and could change that quite a bit. But another one that we're, we're going to be talking about today is one very useful is these potentiometers, this one is off of a chassis uh, auxiliary board. A lot of times they'll be mounted on to the chassis or so forth. So we're also going to talk about this kind today too. One thing we don't talk a lot about in our videos is different types of multimeters. I know some of you go out and you buy a cheaper multimeter to start with. Um, this one right here is quite a bit more expensive than this one, but this one is auto ranging. So in other words, it kind of sets the range for you. You just choose AC, DC, ohms, continuity tests like that. This one over here, as you can see, this is all DC, AC, and then down here is your ohms. So what you'd have to do here is set the range. This one auto does the range. So it'll read from very small ohms. Like I said, some pots are, are very little, like a 10, uh, 10 ohm pot or something, up to maybe a 20,000 K pot or something. You know, So this one will automatically detect that. And you'll see numbers over here in a minute, like K, which would stand for thousands and so forth. This guy right here, though, you have to be in the range. Let's use a 100 ohm pot for an example. On this one, you would just choose ohms, and it would read it. On this one, though, you're going to have to get in the range just above that. Uh, so this would be like 200 or less. This range would be from 2,000 to 200. So depending, if we want to read 100, we're going to have to go for this one. If we're reading 5K pot, we're going to have to jump over here and read the 20K because it's higher, or the 5K is in this range. So you want to go up one level according to what you're trying to read. Again, this one, though, does it automatically. So many of you probably have one like this starting off with, but as you begin to get better at your game building and you want to get some better equipment, you might look for an auto-ranging one. Uh, you might notice in most of the videos we shoot, I use a Fluke, which it, and my brand is a, uh, my model is an auto-ranging one. So you might want to upgrade on your next birthday or something. Good thing to ask for a Christmas present or something. 
Okay, let's get to reading the values on this and see if this potentiometer right here is actually good or not. The, we're going to set it on ohms. Now, some of you know this by now, but ohms, it kind of looks like an upside-down horseshoe or like a, a, a fraternity house symbol or something. And uh, that is right there the symbol for ohms. And it's going to measure resistance. So we're going to put our meters on ohms. Again, we got the auto-ranging multimeter here. And here we have one. Now, you'll notice that there are three different uh, leads or uh, places coming off of here. What we want to do first is if you go to the two outsides, that will tell us the maximum range. And we know that this one already says it's 100. And as you can look right here, we're reading 100.7. That may change a little bit, but as you can see, there's 100 ohms right there. So we know that this is a 100 ohm. Now, if we were only reading, say, 40, or 75. We, would have, we wouldn't even have to go any further. We could stop right here and know that we need to replace this. But we know that it's reading the maximum. What we want to find out though, is it working properly? Does it go from maximum to minimum? To do that, we're just going to switch and put the black lead right here in the middle. Now as it's in the middle, watch what happens as I change the value down, as I turn it to the left. I'm going down, can you see that's going down 95, 93. The more I turn it, the lower the value is going to get. 70, 60, and so forth. See, there is, it is varying. See, I'm going all the way down, and there's 0, or 0 0.1, almost nothing. And then as I turn it back up, it's going to increase. So therefore, we know that this is a good working pot. When it's turned all the way up, or when we go to the outside, we're getting a, a 100 ohms. Give it just a minute. There we go. And if I go in the middle and turn it all the way up, we're getting a 100 ohms. And also, even as, as important, when I turn it all the way down, it goes to zero, so we're getting a full range from zero to 100. So this is a good potentiometer right here. And you can check yours in, in your game the same way. Now, one trick that I, I will show you is, let's take this one again. This one, for instance. Well, this is a little bit different, but if we go to the outsides, it will tell us the maximum, we'll give this just a second. Now you can see this one is reading about 112, which on a 100 ohm pot is pretty close. You're not exactly going to read 100. But one trick that I did want to show you with this, you see how I'm having a touch here? Well, you can actually follow the wires and do it at the next connection or even farther back. Of course, the farther you go, maybe a little bit less here. We're still reading 112.1 there. So you don't only have to read it right here. You could follow your wires back to wherever they go, and you could read it there too. That's just another trick to show you. So you don't always have to take the potentiometer out or get to the potentiometer. Follow the wires, and especially most of the time, what we're talking about here would be speaker wires. So you could follow them out and then test them from there. Okay, now we're going to talk about monitor pots, which I know some of you have had some questions about. Uh, let me first start off with this disclaimer. The best and true, most accurate way to test these is to take them out of circuit. Now, what I mean by that is to desolder and take the solder out of there and actually remove it from the board. And then outside on the board is where you can get a more accurate reading. But for today, for today I'm just going to show you how to read it once you get it there. Now, just like the other pots before, you have three legs. These two would be your outside, and the kind of middle one would be the middle, just like on this guy. We were reading the two outsides and also the middle. So they work pretty much the same way. If we go to the outside 
on this one right here. Give it just a minute. We'll read that that is 10.06. And you might notice right up there next to that ohm symbol is a K. Remember the K stands for 1000. So this is a 10K pot. Then this one up above it. We'll give it a minute. It's not reading, uh, reading that high. So main point I'm trying to make is some of these are 100, some are 10K. So you can't just always swap this one and this one. You need to make sure before you swap that they have the same value. Now let's read the resistance across here and see how it reads. Going back to the 10K pot, we'll give it a minute. There it is, All right at 10K. Now watch as I turn it. The value is going down. There's 7, 5, 4, 3, 2. And if I go all the way, we're getting virtually nothing. And I'll turn it back up. And we get 10. So as you can see, this pot right here, we read across was 10K. And it went all the way down to 0, all the way back up to 10. So this one's good. So let's say you're having some trouble with your vertical position or your vertical size. This would be a, probably a better example. Vertical size is just not stretching all the way out. And you read or see that this is supposed to be uh, 10, 10 k but when you test it, you're only getting like 8 k or something. But your screen also won't go as far as you want it to. This would be a good place to start or one thing good to change. Again, we want to stress that the best way to test these is to take it completely out of circuit. A great way to use this tool would be if your B plus voltage is off, you could actually make sure it's not the potentiometer by reading it like this. Well, you guys know how to get in touch with us by now, um, but please, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to contact us. Again, thank you for watching the Arcade Repair Tips video series, still in high def.